Hey guys, it's Timothy here. We're here for round three. We've lost the die roll for the third time in a row. Um, I think we're going to keep this hand. We have a bunch of two drops. We have black and white mana. And yeah, I'm just happy. My opponent Mulligan down to six. I played against nothing but opponents who Mulligan, um, which sucks for my opponents. Oh, opponent goes down to five. Jeez, that's the third opponent in a row. Three opponents gone down to five. It's all skill, right? It's all skill. So we are going to play this desert just to give us access to both colors next turn, even though technically I don't have to. I have two two drops that are white, but this seems like a very good curve out for me. So I'm probably going to go... Um, Mummy Paramount seems like probably the best thing to start off with. I don't know. All of these car these two are both comparable. Sunset Pyramid. That's a great card to be to have when you're Mulgan down to five. It just gives you stuff to do with your mana. Um, and kind of get you back in a game, right? So I think we're going to lead with... Hmm. This is interesting, actually. Uh, one of these two, definitely, because they both attack for three next turn. Um, Mummy Paramount seems like the best bet. Petra's Avenger can attack through pretty much anything my opponent can play. And they are black, so they could have Dune Beetle or something like that, which bricks it. But I think I'm going to go with the Mummy Paramount. Um, just getting the extra damage on board. Converting my zombie creatures into extra damage is nice. Hopefully I draw another land so I can play a creature next turn. Unraveling Mummy, definitely. And then the following turn I can deploy two threats. I can play Binding Mummy and then Wretched Camel, Tap a Dude, Attack for Four. And see my opponent using their mana for Sunset Pyramid, but it hits them a land, which is why I like Sunset Pyramid. It also just takes over the late game as a way to um, get tons of card advantage. So we're going to play Unraveling, Unraveling Mummy. And then hopefully draw away in next turn so we can play two threats. But we are attacking for three this turn. And I, my opponent's in a fine position for having Mulgan down to four, I think. Or Mulgan down to five. They've got both their colors. They're very likely to be able to start playing blockers at the very least. Are they they're using Sunset Pyramid to draw? They just have no action. Alright, I'm getting a little lucky against my opponents, I think. They can't even have Sunblast up. I'm going to play this desert. I'm not going to get too greedy. Um, and then my play here, I just want to play a zombie, I think. The best one's probably Binding Mummy, so that I can tap down a blocker my opponent's next turn. I get to attack for five. <clears throat> next turn I can play both of these things. Or maybe Mummy Paramount was the best thing to play there. Because next turn I can go Binding Mummy plus Wretched Camel. Hmm. I also have Final Reward coming up soon. Well, my opponent's going down to 12, and I have a way to shut off a blocker. Not to mention I can just give my attacking creatures death touch. I haven't... You, you've seen this card, like... Ooh, Impeccable Time in. Very good. Very good from my opponent there. Forget that card exists, because Sandblast is just a better version of it, but... Opponent is doing what they can with what they have, which is good for them. Do get to attack for 5 again next turn. Alright, decision time. Things I don't want to see. 3-4 Lifelinker. That is not a card I want to see up from my opponent's deck right now. Ah, you have your own Paramounts. Fancy, fancy. Desert's Hold, that's strong. Opponent doesn't gain any life off of it, which is nice for me. And they're down to two cards in hand. So I think... This does change things a little bit. I'm definitely going to play a mummy first to tap this thing down. And I'm probably going to play Oketra's Avenger after that, just so that I can hold a mummy in hand for the next turn, or a zombie in hand for the next turn. So we're going to go another mummy paramount. That's the card I want down. Makes my um, next uh, zombie play is much better. This paramount's going to trigger, but not do anything. Um, we can go and play this out now and attack for just two. Opponent on three potential cards in hand next turn, with four if they want to use Sunset Pyramid. And I have six, seven, eight damage on board next turn. Alright, hitting land drops, could have tons of stuff here. They draw with Sunset Pyramid means they just don't have a lot going on. Carry on Screecher. Okay. It's respectable. Respectable. I just want to hit another Mummy Paramount. 
I have four in my deck. Let me draw the other two. <laughs> um, this is definite attack. And it looks like I might be trading off something here. Hmm. Alternatively, I could final reward something, but I don't think I need to. I think I'm just going to trade something off at this point. So um, I could also use active heroism to save whatever blocks. I'm going to tap my opponent's Mummy Paramount and put them in a position where they're tempted to block with their better creature. So tap this. I didn't know Binding Mummy could tap artifacts. <laughs> uh, apparently it taps artifacts. All right. Um, we're going to attack with... I don't want Avenger to die. Actually, best thing for them to block is Bind and Mummy. Although if I don't exert this, I can act of heroism. No, that doesn't actually save it. So we're going to exert. We're going to attack. We are going to attack. I might not exert this. I think they're going to block Bind and Mummy. Um, but then they'd be taking five, six. No, active heroism here. Hmm, it's actually a tough choice here. Because active heroism doesn't save this if I don't exert it. I honestly, if I do exert it, they block Binded Mummy. But if I don't exert it, maybe they block here. Even though the Binded Mummy is way more threatening for them. Let's exert. Just to be safe, make sure we're getting in as much damage as possible. I would love for them to, I don't know. Uh, anything's fine, actually. If they don't block at all, I'd be very surprised. All right. Now, do we want to use Active Heroism to save that? We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage next turn. They're taking five here, down to seven. Um, hmm. I like the idea of not using that Active Heroism. Or, I just, I have final reward in hand, though, so I don't see this going too badly. This trades my trick for their 4-drop. If the best thing they had last turn was Carrion Screecher, then I'm not too worried. They're going to scry on upkeep, too, which is good for us. They need to hit something big, and they're using up their mana anyway. Okay, opponent says, you've got it. Even though I didn't really have it on, uh, on board, but... Um, Let's go to sideboard and see what we got. Against another black-white deck. Looks like zombies. Um, in fact, it looks very similar to my deck. Gideon's Defeat is going to be good here. And I think a Lurching Rot Beast is going to be a little bit worse. Same for the Angel. I don't think I'm going to have a thousand years to go ahead and cast Angel. I think Trial is fine. If it trades for a 2-drop, that's good. But if my opponent's just playing 2-drops like me and the same creatures I am then this should work out nicely because I've got a massive two drops. So we're going to cut the Rot Beast for Gideon's Defeat, and we're going to go ahead and ship it like that. It's very unfortunate my opponent had to Mogan down to five, but at least they made a game out of it. I was just too much pressure. My curve out was very good. Um, <clears throat> this is a very land-heavy hand, but I'm going to keep it. Could get flooded. I wish one of these lanes was a cyclone desert, but it doesn't mean that we get to cast pretty much anything we draw. And we're going to lead with Fester and Mummy. Oh, Catcher's Avenger. Probably. Don't know for sure yet. Okay, another Catcher's Avenger is fine. Means I'm going to be at least able to keep up with what my opponent's doing. My opponent doesn't do anything here. Uh, yeah, I definitely would just play a Catcher's Avenger, but... They've got a Binding Mummy of their own. Do get to free roll and attack here for the most part. If they want to trade their Binding Mummy for my Fester and Mummy, then go for it. But I don't think they're going to want to do that. Another reason Fester and Mummy is better than your average 1-mana one 1-1 one one is because it does trade up for 2-2s two because it can throw that minus 1 counter around. Uh, I assume my opponent's just going to curve out with zombies here and do what I did last game, except they're on the play, and that works a lot better when they're on the play. This card does attack quite well. Okay, yep. Ooh, are they missing a third lane drop? 
I don't know yet for sure, but it looks like they might be. Attack me for two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will not block. Do you have a land? Oh my god, they missed a second land drop. This is not good for them. And I drew Unraveling Mummy. And then the turn after, I can go Binding Mummy plus Oketra's Avenger. Pretty sick. Do I exert Oketra's Avenger here? Yeah, I think so. Just get ahead in the race. My opponent hits me back for five, though. I'm not going to exert. They want to trade for their Mummy Paramount. That's fine. I don't think they're... Oh, they do. Interesting. That's 100% okay with me. Because they're dealing more damage back to me than I can deal to them. So trading off my three-power creature for what could be, you know, a, a four-power creature during some turns. Desert's Hold on Unraveling Mummy. That does stop activated abilities, so... We don't get to completely destroy our opponent's hopes and dreams here, but that's fine. All right, we do get to deploy more things on the board, though. Stir the sands. Ooh, um, that actually... Now, I'm going to play these two first, and if I draw a black source, that'll be the plan. But if not, cycling this is a pretty good way to get rid of Binding Mummy. Um, let's go ahead and attack first. Plus, it, I can actually use it as a combat trick to tap down an attacker before attacks if I have Binding Mummy on the battlefield. So I think I'm pretty far ahead in this game at the moment. Uh, my opponent doesn't have access to black mana. Oh, no, cancel. What am I doing? What are you doing, Tim? Cha-cha! Binding Mummy. Cha-cha! Catcher's Avenger. Okay. Now we're looking pretty good. I'm not going to block at all if they want to do something here. Do I have a way to get this enchantment off of my Unraveling Mummy? I don't think I do. I don't have any blink effects or anything like that. Interesting that my opponent attacks here, too. They might have some sort of trick. Okay, they have the Pyramid. That's good. They're gonna... Oh, if they draw right away, that's so bad for them. It just tells me they have nothing. Um... All right, we're going to go to combat first, and if my opponent wants to be cheeky and try to untap this, then we'll stir the sands in response and tap it back down. Could be impeccable time in here as well, which is okay. Um, if I exert this and they have impeccable time in, that doesn't actually do anything because they can respond to the trigger by using impeccable time in, and it looks like my opponent's just taking six. Youch. Uh, I'm going to hold up stir the sands here and tap down their blocker. In fact, if they want to attack me with the Binding Mummy, so be it. Then I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight power on board. <clears throat> okay, they've got their black source. What could that do? Scrounger, hate that card. It's a lot better than it looks. All right, so here we're definitely cycling Stir the Sands. We're going to tap Scrounger, and we're hoping to hit Removal Spell. Yep. Yep. Then I draw a card. A Cursed Horde. That's decent. Hmm. <clears throat> now I attack for three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put my opponent down to three. Yeah. They have to pretty much attack me back, right? But they're only going to go up to six there. And if they don't attack me back, I have this mummy paramount to have my way with them. <laughs> uh, I am going to play this. Gives me the potential to play multiple zombies next turn. I'm not going to be able to kill my opponent, and they have a pump spell this could get out of hand. But let's go and tap their Binding Mummy. And attack all in. Notice we don't have to exert our Avenger either. Put our opponent down to three, I believe. <clears throat> all right. This is looking good. Mummy Paramount is quite good against this lifelinker. Because either they have to attack with the lifelinker to get ahead a little bit, or 
Um, they don't attack with it, in which case I can tap it down. Notice they didn't scry with their pyramid either, which means they probably have something in hand they can use. What I don't want to see is a pump spell for this to gain them more life. But if I draw a zombie next turn, I should be fine. Oh, they're drawing now. Ooh. Okay, so what they currently have in hand isn't going to cut it. Can they afford to attack? I don't think so. Okay, their goal might just be... Please don't have a zombie. One, two, and I have two zombies. Okay, saving grace could save them too. Card's fine. All right, got it, cool. Um, so that's another 3-0 under our belts. Uh, this zombie deck was good. It really came together, like really came together. We played super sloppy in, I think, games one and two, but I don't know. We, we also played against three opponents in a row who all mulliganed down to five at one point or another. And while my opponent's deck looks good here, he got mana screwed, and my first round opponents were just doing all sorts of weird things. I mean, we lost to Crested Sunmare. That's not something to be ashamed of, but we, we could have played that game way differently, and uh, I made some real mistakes here. But anyway, uh, Black White Zombies is a real aggro deck if you get the payoffs for it. Not like uh, I mean, obviously Lord of the Accursed did work in that second game, but Accursed Horde and Unravel and Mummy never even activated their abilities, but you can see how good they would be even on a board like this. I get to just attack and make any of my zombies indestructible or... Uh, if this guy isn't Desert Holded, give him lifelink and uh, death touch, and there's no way you're racing that, right? So, sorry to my opponents who all got mana screwed in different ways, or uh, different things happened, and they played weird games. But anyway, we went 3-0. I'm happy with it, and I appreciate you guys watching, and hope you had fun. Um, I will see you all next time.